Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today I want to talk about wrist, finger, and arm functions. So a lot of people ask me this question, especially beginners. They say, you know, how do I play? Um, and this is a, a hot issue with so many different teachers. So many teachers say, you have to play from the finger like this. Other teachers say, no, it's all from the, the arm. And other teachers say, you know, you need to use a little wrist. I want to try to give you a simplified way of thinking about these things today so that you can reorganize it in your mind and give yourself the most easy way to think about these issues, okay? What I always tell students, first and foremost, is that the fingers have to have at least some sort of activity. A lot of teachers promote, oh yeah, you just have to play, you know, just totally free, and they won't let their students, like, even play a note until they practice, like, that, you know, and it just seems like, good grief, are you ever going to play anything? And other teachers let their the students' technique go bad for so long that I get a lot of students that come to me and they're like, it's just awful. And so how do you get a good balance? What do you think of for your finger? Uh, what's the job of your fingers? What's the job of your wrist? And what's the job of your arm? Let me just say this. I taught a lesson to a boy one time. He's probably 20, 22, something like that. And it was a crazy lesson. I'll just say that much. He said, do I hold my finger like this? Or do I hold it like this? Or do I hold it like this? I couldn't even tell what he was talking about. I had no idea. I think people get too obsessed with this topic of, you know, these minute, tiny movements that they never actually end up practicing anything. They just sit and analyze the perfect way to play, and that's very um, counterproductive. You do have to sit and risk it, and then you refine it from there, and then you try it again, and then you refine it. So if you are having these issues, if you're having these struggles, don't sit and get caught up with only doing that, okay? Only, you know, analyzing everything. You gotta play at some point, okay? Active fingers, your arm supplies all the weight, and a lot of people say, you know, you feel it from your back as well. Yes, your back, your core, um, you feel it down into your feet. Like if you're practicing your, uh, your arpeggios, for instance, I like to spread my legs a little bit, feel like I'm sitting on a horse. That way I can kind of shift my weight up the keys. Let's see. So you can feel that weight, but ultimately it comes down mostly to the arm, the wrist, and the fingers. Yes, of course it comes from your back, but it's hard for a brand new student to feel it in their back when they're trying to get used to this uh, finger stuff, okay? So the arm supplies all the weight, the fingers remain active. Now, I think the wrist is one of the most valuable tools for sound control. I'm not saying you start playing like this, okay? That's bad. You see every little kid play. Especially if they're real young, like five, and they have like, you know, their arm weighs like one pound, you know? My arm probably weighs like 20 pounds here. They ha they're not working with a lot, so they try to get more sound doing this. You do have to train them to use their arm, keep their wrist you know, relaxed but fairly solid. So I'm not, when I say relaxed but solid, see how it doesn't have a lot of give in it? It's not this, you don't have so much give. So I wanna demonstrate with a cute little Chopin Mazurka, Opus 68, number two. I've never actually sat down and worked on it, but I f figured this would be a great little demonstration, okay? Um, So we're just going to work with this, and this is going to teach you the different functions, okay? What I want you to think of when you're playing forte, you always try to play very naturally from everything. Everything dangles loosely, but your wrist doesn't give a lot on your forte passages, okay? So this first one... Relax everything, but keep the wrist fairly solid. I'm not saying lock it up and play like that, but I'm saying... Very natural, but don't 
let it give a lot. And maybe a little less. And when you come down a, a little less, you feel your wrist have a little shock absorption in it. Okay, now, same weight as before. A lot of students struggle, especially with chordal textures like this. This is why I chose this example. A lot of students go... And they, they have a hard time getting the chords to sound evenly, getting a nice consistent tapestry of sound. And so what I like to do is say, drop naturally from your wrist, uh, from your arm weight. Uh, you, oh gosh, I can't even speak right now. Drop, drop naturally using arm weight and then give a little bit more in the wrist. So if you want even more give, You can't really tell. Again, some of these things that you see concert pianists do are totally imperceptible. You just think, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. I have no idea what they're doing. I feel like that a lot of times as I watch concert pianists, and this is what I do for a living. And so, I, you know, I'm a, a teacher and a performer. So, like, if I'm feeling that way, I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way too. Whether they want to admit it to you or not is a different story. But <laughs> I want to uh, say that things that are imperceptible um, that's why it's discouraging, is you don't see everything on the piano um, like you would in, maybe you would see certain things in dance. I don't know, I'm not a dancer, but maybe it's a little more obvious with the way they move. But even that, I'm sure they're thinking of moving their body a certain way that you don't perceive as the audience member. So that's why people, when you see someone play something insanely fast, like... <laughs> They just, it just looks like you're doing something ridiculous, like you're, you're just moving your fingers like this, but they don't know that you've sat and worked, you've sat and worked on that. Rotation, all sorts of rhythms, things like that. So I want to go over how to get that softer one now, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to just drop and keep your wrist solid, okay? Now drop and keep your wrist medium, medium buoyancy, medium give. Okay, now lots of give. See, so I don't have any give for my super solid stuff. I just, it's a solid rock. It's relaxed. I'm not like feeling tension, but it's solid. It's a, it's a solid feeling. A little bit of give, lots of give. And you notice it's all coming from the arm weight. A lot of people have the misperception that all the weight comes into your fingers uh, and you just play with your fingers. Even in something light like this. I can still feel my arm weight supplying the weight. My fingers are much more active than in something like... something like that. So when you see these passages like... your fingers have to activate a little bit more because there's it's not just fingers are pretty stagnant there it's all in the arm and the wrist but in this your fingers move more but you're still using your wrist as a gauge of how much pressure you're still using your arm to supply all the weight okay let's play it again by the way everybody should go check out murray pariah's beethoven uh c minor variations one of the best recordings of it I've ever heard. And he is such a small man. He doesn't weigh a lot. He's very short. But he has like the most perfect sense of using his body weight in an effective manner. He goes like this all the time. He plays way up. Never played it. Sorry, I'm playing by ear there that goes but he's using this natural arm weight it's not it's not forced how that goes okay same thing in this
So whatever you're doing, use your body weight. Again, fingers active, wrist is the shock absorber, arm is the weight supplier. Hope this video has been helpful. If you don't mind sharing, liking, or commenting below, I would truly appreciate it, just so this video can be shared with as many people as possible. Um, I'm trying to be more consistent with my videos, posting one a week, so if you wanna subscribe, you can get those videos on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for your support of Josh Wright Piano TV. Hope you have a great practice session.